people love them or hate them, bats are important to the environment, but they face a serious threat from a disease that was first discovered right here in New York State back in 2006. Terry Belke has an update as he takes us to the outdoors. For many animals, wintertime means hibernation, a means to survive when food is scarce and the weather makes life difficult. For bat populations across North America, hibernation now means death as cave-dwelling bats are being decimated by an invasive fungus causing what is commonly called white nose syndrome. So it's a fungus that grows on their skin in uh, uh, the cold and damp temperatures or damp conditions, cold and damp conditions that are, are necessary for hibernation for the bats. So they think that the spores were accidentally taken to North America, brought into the cave system, and then they're affecting our bats way more than they affect the bats over there. So it's, it's really decimating the populations here. The irritation from the fungus causes them to awaken early from their hibernation, which in turn causes them to use up the fat reserves they need to survive. So every time they wake up, they're using up that energy. So they're not going to have enough energy to make it till spring when there's food again. So these bats will just starve to death. White nose syndrome is both efficient and fast. Three species of New York bats, the tricolored, the northern long-eared, and the little brown bat have suffered near extinction level losses. The major declines uh, really occurred, you know, within two or three years of the arrival of the disease. And so for those species, we're talking about losses between 90 and uh, up to you know, perhaps 99 percent. The disease has spread outward from New York into the rest of the country and into Canada. It's confirmed in 33 states. Uh, they suspect it's in five additional states and it's in seven Canadian provinces too. So it's, it's really just spread like wildfire. Wildlife biologists have been feverishly trying to find a solution and there is evidence that some bat species are developing genetic adaptations to help combat the disease. But even this may be a case of too little, too late. Mostly at this point, it's probably going to be up to the bats to, to adapt and respond, and, and hopefully that will be the case. Taking you to the outdoors, I'm Terry Belke.